Good morning, good morning. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I normally don't make content on Shabbat. This article came out, and I noticed it this morning, and the Father gave me a nudge. So, I'm here. So, first off, I want to get out in front of everything else, and if you are a new prepper, if you're a beginning prepper, if you're somebody that just started doing it, I want to welcome you. And secondly, I want to give you just a little bit of a warning. Uh, there are a lot of vultures out there in the preparedness industry right now. So kind of try to avoid that the best you can. And, and the best things that I can tell you on is watch out for the channels that are telling you about the end of the world every single day. Uh, and watch out for the ones that's always got something to sell you to fix the problem. You want to look for channels and content that give you solutions. That being said, I don't know of any other prepper channel out there, and I'm not a prepper channel, I'm a news channel, but I don't know of any prepper channel out there that talks about recovery. And that's one thing that I am very insistent on because, you know, if, if you have all your survival plans laid out, and even if they are the best of plans, if you do not have any type of recovery plans set out, then all that survival, all that prepping is going to do is delay the inevitable. So it's important, it's imperative that you have some type of recovery plan, some type of actually getting much, much closer to normality. And that's going to take machinery. That's going to take being able to run combustion engines and that's going to be a big part of it and I don't see any other channels out there that talk to that and I'm not trying to pat myself on the back or anything like that I'm just telling you a statement of fact I'm concerned I'm very concerned we've got a bunch of people out there that's got egos through the roof and uh, knowledge not so much and so Again, I'm here to help. I don't want a dime for doing it. I don't want anything for doing it. I ain't got anything to sell you. Uh, I'll most certainly uh, give you advice if, if you're interested in purchasing something. Uh, I most certainly will give you advice, but I'm not going to sit here and pilfer or anything like that. And I don't even hardly ever bring this up, but there is an Amazon link in the description of the video. If you want to help us out, that way is a great way. We've got a donate link in the description. That way is a great way, but we do not. We can't monetize our videos. We got that ability taken away because of telling the truth. And, uh, and I'm not going to sit here and pilfer a bunch of products to you that you may or may not need uh, just so that I can make a buck off of it or get more free stuff. So now that we got a all that out of the way and it's really sad that I have to spend a few minutes on that there's an article that came out in Reuters this morning and uh, it's titled US prepper culture diversifies amid fear of disaster and political unrest now I would agree that there is a lot of political unrest is it to the point that I think that it's going to cause an SHTF I don't know I, I don't know. I really don't see that. Um, but the reason why I don't see that is because there are a lot of people, especially in this country, that talk a big game, but that's pretty much where it ends. And, um, and I've given case after case of that. People don't like when I point that out. But I, the reason why I point things out, the reason why I cover the news the way I do and tell the truth unapologetically is because the fact of the matter is we cannot fix anything if we don't first acknowledge it. We have to first acknowledge it. And then once we acknowledge it, then we can start to have discussions on how we can fix it. And to be quite honest, there's a lot of denial right now. But you're here because of prepping. Let's continue on. The article, and I'll read the article to you, says Brooke Morgan surveyed boots at the Survival and Prepper Show in Colorado that were stocked with boxes of ammunition, mounds of trauma medical kits, and every type of knife imaginable. A self-described 30-year-old lesbian from Indiana 
Morgan is one of a new breed, breed of Americans getting ready to survive political upheaval and natural catastrophes, a pursuit that until recently was largely associated with far-right movements such as white nationalists since the 1980s. Now, I will tell you this. I don't know of it, and I've been into preparedness for well, a couple of decades at this point, and I have yet to meet a white nationalist prepper. So I'm just saying, I can't tell you that there's none out there, uh, because I personally make it pretty clear that I am not interested in anybody's discrimination. Uh, I cannot stand discrimination, and uh, and I make that pretty clear and up front. So I would imagine that the, if there are, and they were in contact with me, they probably held those thoughts back a little bit. But I haven't seen it, and I don't think it's super widespread whatsoever. Researchers say the number of peppers has doubled in size to about 20 million since 2017. Much of that growth is from minorities and people considered left of center politically, whose sense of insecurity was heightened by Donald Trump's 2016 election, the COVID-19 pandemic, more frequent extreme weather, and the 2020 racial justice protests following the murder of George Floyd. So real quick, I want to jump in and, and mention something here. Uh, this whole weather thing, okay, it is not what is being sold to the, the people of the world. It is not global warming, okay, it's not even remotely global warming. If you want to know what's going on with the weather, and there most certainly is a change in the weather, there's a change in the temperatures, there's many, many changes going on in the world, go and look up a channel called Suspicious Observers. The O in Observers is the number zero. So, Suspicious Observers. In fact, I'll put a link down, uh, I'll put a link with the link to this article in the description and in the first comment to Ben's channel. And he is the go-to person to understand what is going on as far as the weather is concerned and what to expect in the future because we do have a disaster on its way. But it's not going to be fixed by any means that we have control of. So the important thing is to know what it is that you need to do, where it is that you need to be. So I will send you to Ben to get that information. Going on, it says, I'm really surprised by the number of people of color here, Morgan said. I always went to these shows with my family in Indiana, and it was just white people who were my parents' age. There are a lot of younger people here, too. It's a real change. Morgan grew up in a prepper family and still considers herself self-reliant and ready to handle a disaster, but she left the prepper world of her youth behind in part to escape the conservatism associated with the movement. The diversification of prepping was clear last weekend at the Survival and Prepper Show at the fairgrounds in Boulder County, a liberal district which President Joe Biden won in 2020 by nearly 57 percentage points over Trump. Over 2,700 people paid $10 each to attend the show, organizers said, and attendees were varied. Bearded white men with closely cropped hair and heavily tattooed arms were there, but so were hippie moms carrying babies in rainbow-colored slings and chatting about canning methods, Latino families looking over greenhouses and water filtration systems, and members of the local Mountain View Fire Rescue Team, who in 2021 battled a devastating fire in the region, giving CPR demonstrations and encouraging citizens to be more prepared for extreme events. Going on, it says attendees and those running the booths said the show reflected the concerns of millions of Americans who no longer feel that they can always count on the government or private industry to provide the basics like electricity, water, and food. They cited the pandemic disruption of the supply chains, the 2021 power grid crisis in Texas that left millions without power, and the recent outages for thousands of AT&T mobile users. Chris Ellis, a colonel in the U.S. Army who works on disaster preparedness and recovery, is a, and is a leading researcher into the prepper movement who has tracked its growth to 20 million people based on household resiliency data from the Federal Emergency Management Agency. 
He said that what shapes individual preppers, which he defines as someone who can live for a month without no outside support, is how they react to a single question, do I feel safe? People want to regain their agency, their sense of control, and do something to match their fears to their actions, said Ellis, who underscored that he did not speak on behalf of the Department of Defense. People motivated by climate change, Ellis said, tend to be homesteaders who grow their own food and move to more climate-proof locations, such as the mild summer haven of Duluth, Minnesota. Others, whose main fear is lawlessness, are frequently the gun enthusiasts stereotypically associated with the prepper movement. The super-rich often respond to their fears by spending millions to build bunkers in remote spots. For John Ramey, a former innovation advisor to the Obama administration and creator of the prepper website The Prepared, the community has grown to reflect American society at large in terms of political beliefs and demographic categories. The only real unifying denominator among preppers these days is people who are smart enough to be aware of what the world is like and they have the gumption to do something about it, Ramey said. Back at the Prepper Show at the Boulder County Fairgrounds, Jennifer Council stum- uh, strummed her thumb against the edge of an axe, placing it in her hand as, as, uh, and said it was perfect for both cutting down small trees and doing the delicate shaving work needed to, be, uh, needed to create timber. Council, a 50-year-old mom of three adult children and self-described uh, black urban farmer, lives in a suburban home northwest of Denver. And Ben will tell you that Denver sucks. Howdy, Ben. Uh, Preppers used to be seen as extreme weirdos, Council said. Then the pandemic happened and grocery stores were short on food. Then you had the unrest of protest around the police killings of young black men. Then you had the storming of the Capitol in Washington. People are realizing that it's important to be able to depend on what you can do for yourself. And that is absolutely correct. Again, I am there for anybody looking for any information, and I am there to take the people that's been prepping for a while to the next step and talk about that recovery that we're going to need, because there is no way people are going to be able to, by hand, and I've said this a million times, I'll keep saying it because it's not being heard, especially by the older prepper community, there is no way humanly possible that we can plant, harvest, and process enough food to last a year for all the people, even, even if you've got a small group of people, for all the people and all the animals. Can't do it. It's not possible. We're going to need machinery. And the most common machinery that we are used to is machinery that involves the combustion engine a machinery that needs electricity. So why are we going to just let so many people fall to the wayside? Because we don't want to learn about wood gasification. It doesn't make any sense. Not a lick of common sense there. Look, we don't even have the implements, the uh, you know animal-drawn implements, if you will. But even if we started today and we started building or buying those animal-drawn implements is what I'm calling them, we still got to have the trained animals, we still got to have the trained people, and you got to have something to feed those animals and people in the meantime. Be awful nice to have that combustion engine, would it not? Wood gasification. For those who want the simple PDF of it. You can go to thewatchmannews.com. There is a resources tab. You click that resources button, tab, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I think it's the first thing, but I'm not positive. You will see FEMA gasifier. I urge people to not only download that, but to print out a copy. I've got a printed copy. I, I, I have it memorized. I don't even need to see it on anything. And I've still got a printed copy over there on the bookshelf. So don't just download it. Print it out. Make sure you put it in a safe space. And even if that includes your safe, I would highly recommend it. Because that information 
is going to be gold soon enough. So anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I hope to see some new faces around for the live shows. Shabbat Shalom.